G'day guys, and welcome to G-Man Specs. Today, we're gonna to take a look at a video called, Why Are Older Men Staying Single? And this is by a YouTuber called Every Man Has a Story. So go and check him out if you enjoy the video, give him a sub, a like on, over on his content. I'd like to give him full credit. Hello guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we get a lot of emails from guys who uh, talking about relationships, especially men back in America, my home country. And they're saying, Mark, you know, I'm sure it's all nice and everything over there and the Filipinas look like really sweet girls, but you know what? <laughs> I'm fine being single. I don't want to be any more relationships. I'm settled in my life and I've given up on the whole idea of dating or going out with anybody. And uh, there's different reasons behind that. I mean, some of them went through very painful divorces where they yeah. lost, you know, their house and big part of their pension and it just left a bit, big bad taste in their mouth, the whole idea of marriage and a relationship. And then also, depending on where you live, if you live in like a small town in Indiana, there just might not be much of a selection. You know, there's just, you know, no women that these guys are attracted to or they're attracted to women that are outside of their uh, scope of you know possibilities you know women that wouldn't be interested in them anyways um, I think that's a really good point he makes right because a lot of guys especially like I like to talk about my friend Larry all right, who I talk about um, in a lot of my other videos I actually caught up with him uh, the other night and he was just so frustrated because he goes on all the dating apps guys and he shoots for the stars like he's not a bad looking guy he'd be uh, an average guy and that's not bad average isn't bad right He's an average looking guy. He's got height on his side. Um, he looks good. He's got the beard and everything like that. Um, but he probably doesn't fall into that real highly attractive bracket, right? Which is the reality on the dating apps. It's all about looks, profile. He, he, he doesn't do a good job on his profile. His, his pictures aren't very good, all that sort of stuff. I give him this feedback. But he complains. Um, he says, look, I'm going for all these girls. And he shows me his app. And he shows me the girl, sort of girls he's trying to swipe on. They're girls that I wouldn't even have a go on. I'm not saying I'm the best guys, but I'm just saying, um, go average. That's my strategy. And it always has been go the average looking girls, go the girls who are at least a couple of points sort of below you. So that to them, you're the star. Because if you're going for the hot ones, you're just going to have frustration. That's it. That's just the way it goes. Um. And so they go to, you know, to Walmart and they see these women that are their age that are 40, 50 pounds overweight and they're, they're wearing sweatpants and they got tattoos and they just like say, you know, forget about it. I'd be happier just being alone by myself. Um, and also, you know, sometimes they find women, you know, in general kind of intimidating, especially American women, because they can be a bit aggressive um, and kind of to the point, they're kind of blunt when it comes out to things, you know, saying what they feel. And, uh, you know, guys, you know, we're not, you know, wilting flowers or anything, but we know we've got feelings too. And when a woman comes out and says something negative about you, you know, or insults you or, you know, is uh, very opinionated, it can turn a guy off, you know, really quick. And then I think that's a really good point, especially like the ladies, especially middle age, because a lot of my viewers, you guys are in the sort of middle age, they're 35 to 44 and plus. That's the reality of it is these kind of ladies in Australia, Canada, UK, America, from what I'm hearing in my comments, it's all the same sort of everywhere in the Western world, is they're highly opinionated. Um, they can be downright nasty, over entitled, um, living in la-la land for what they want from a man. And so then when you, you get a guy who, who's trying to meet a woman... Um, and his heads aren't in the clouds like that, and he comes across those sort of women. And I wouldn't say it's intimidating, right? I would say it's more off-putting that you don't want to approach um, and have anything to do with these women, date these women, spend money and time on them. I think that's just what it is. And I think that's why guys just go, you know what? I'm happy just to take a breather for now. Um, and then they, they take that breather and then their life is less stressful because every guy that I know that's had any big problems in their life, even myself, has been generally due to women. Um, female behavior, you know, you're going through bad breakups, you're going through bad divorces, um, you're getting cleaned out, etc. You start just thinking, why am I going through all of this effort if in the end, in the long run, 
a lot of the time, you're going to have a bad experience. I'm not saying it's all, but it's very, very common. And especially guys who have had those bad experiences before, women like to call it emotionally unavailable. I don't call it that. I call it smart. I call it risk averse. So are you doing a risk analysis on them? And when you're doing that risk analysis and you start actually weighing it up, especially when you become middle age, right? Or approaching middle age or past middle age, whatever it is, you know, Sex isn't the thing that's at the front of your mind. And as a younger guy, that's just going to drive you to put up with all these bad behaviors, right? And make bad decisions. But when you're not driven, you know, by your schlong, all right, and making bad decisions, trying to get action, uh, you start to see the world a lot more clearly. And that's why guys check out. Then, of course, you know, there's the old thing, you know, the baggies that these women have. Like if you're dating women within your age range, say, you know, I'm talking men 50 and up, um, They've got kids usually, teenagers, and the teenagers don't want nothing to do with you. And if, let's say, you ended up living together in the same household, you know, these kids aren't going to listen to you. They're going to do whatever they want unless they want money from you. And, you know, <laughs> that can be kind of, you know, a weird situation, having these, you know, soon-to-be adult kids, you know, underfoot and basically kind of looking at you like, who the hell are you in our house? And we don't do it that way and all that stuff. Yeah, especially I've heard a lot of this. So I haven't, um, you know, dated someone with kids, um, nothing serious like that yet. Gone dumpster diving for single mums and all that sort of stuff. But what I'm hearing from a lot of guys who do make that decision is that, yep, it's all good at the start. And then once you're in, you're locked in um, and you're just seen as a provisioner um, of resources for somebody else's children. And those children are never going to respect you. They're never going to listen to you like you're their father. So, so what's the point? So a lot of guys go through that experience they have a really bad breakup. Um, maybe they've gotten close to those kids and, and maybe those kids do like them. But when you do get broken up with, um, you know what, what women are like, guys. They just cut you off at the knees. And look, the reality is you, you don't have any entitlement to see those kids or be involved in that sort of unit that you had and contributed to anymore. And I think that's what hurts a lot of guys as well. And then a lot of these women have a lot of debt too. They got credit card debt. They got car loans. You know, and uh, you don't find that out until you're deep into the relationship. Yep. And um, another thing is just, you know, low sex drive. A lot of these guys just, you know, they've lost interest in sex. You know, when you're old, when you're younger, you're in your 20s, 30s even, you know, that's all you can think about yep. is, you know, it's sex is on your mind all the time. Plus, it's, it's being thrown in your face on TV and movies and advertising. Check out my video on Post Night Clarity, guys. I talk about this, all right? It's Kawato from uh, Total Recall. He takes over your body. He starts making all these really bad decisions. Good old Kawato. That's code name for your schlong, right? Thinking with the small head and making really bad decisions based on your urges to have sex with women, right? Now, when you get to middle age, it even ha it's happened to me, guys. Like, I still got a, a good sex drive and everything like that, but I actually noticed that when I got to about 35, it just dropped off. And that's actually when I dropped out of the, off the dating apps and all that because I was spending so much time on it in my even teens, 20s, and early 30s, chasing women around, um, prioritizing it. You know, that was all that really mattered. It was awesome just to get some action. You'd do anything just to try and get something right. We all do it. And you get to a point where you're just like, why am I, do why am I doing this? Like, why am I doing this? And this was this guy's talking about. You no longer have that you know, small head driving the ship, you're thinking with the big head. And that's sort of like a superpower when you start looking at the world a lot more clearly and start looking at women for what are they also doing for you? What are you getting out of it? I'm not saying all of them are bad, right? But but a lot of them lead with sex, as we know. You get into a relationship with them and that and that dries up. And so you're sort of trapped in a situation that you might not want to be in anymore that's not benefiting you anymore because what you initially were attracted to and what you're getting, you're not getting it anymore. But once you get to be a certain age, you know, it just doesn't mean that much to you. It's nice, you know, and some guys enjoy it, but they say, you know, I don't really need it, especially if it's not with it someone who you're really not that attracted to anyway. Um, <laughs> Dumps the so that's part of it. Now, that can be fixed with uh, TRT injections. I mean, a lot of guys I know, myself included, have done that, and it does make a difference. Um, and then, of course, you know, guys just say, you know, I'm just, I'm happy to just stay home and watch TV. I was married yeah. for... 25 or 30 years and I was miserable and now I can just sit home watch TV watch the shows I want go to yeah. bed when I want take a nap when I want and do what I want to do and I'm totally content and I don't need anybody in my life and that's fine if you don't think you need anybody you don't need anybody 
Um, and they'll say, you know, my dog is all the companionship I need. Uh, another so that's a really good point, guys. So I was married for a couple of years. That was it. But I was in a long-term relationship for quite a few years before that. I've had other long-term relationships with women. And what I found that being single, all right, or, and, and and not be, not living, cohabitating with women is that it's awesome. Like you can do whatever you want, whenever you want. Um, and once you've given that up, right, because once you move in with a woman, most of the time, most of them, not all of them, but the, you slowly, slowly, your freedoms sort of get taken away from you. It's like the prison warden slowly taking away your freedoms and things that you enjoy. Your hobbies you know, get criticized, your friends get criticized, your family gets criticized. And so then when you do come out the other end of that and you go back into your single bachelor lifestyle that you've now got, you go, how good is this? Like, I don't want to give this up again. I can go and do whatever I want, whenever I want. I can spend my money on I want. I'm not going to be asked about what I'm spending my money on. I can do all of my hobbies any time of the day. Right? I can go to bed when I want. And it's funny. You say, oh, what do you mean you can't go to bed when you want? If you guys have ever lived with women, generally when they go to bed, they want you to go to bed with them and I'll sort of make a huff and puff about that, right? So he makes a really good point on that. So guys who have been married can understand that, that you've been released from the jail um, and why would you want to go back into that scenario where you have someone in your space 24-7? Another reason is like poor health. A lot of these guys have let their health, you know, slip, you know, when they're, they're not in a relationship, they're not married, they're not looking. They're not going to the gym. They're not taking care of themselves. They're kind of eating what they want, putting on weight. Some of them have diabetes. A lot of them are overweight. And so, you know, for these reasons, you know, they just uh, aren't healthy enough to even have an active, you know, sex life or dating life or social life even because you're kind of stuck at home. Um, and then another thing is like, um, especially if they haven't dated in 25 or 30 years, they just have low self-esteem, no confidence at all. They have no confidence. Uh, when it comes to a woman or approaching somebody, they they may know somebody that at work or somebody at a club that they go to and she's been friendly to them, but they just don't really know how to approach her and what to say to take it to the next step, you know, whether that's going out or whatever it is, they just don't know what to do. And when they find themselves alone with someone or in a conversation where it's just the two of them, say they're at a party or a bar or whatever, and it's just the two of them, they and he's got to carry on a conversation. It's like, they don't know what to say, you know? And they so I think that's a really good point, but I don't think that applies just to men who have been married for long periods of time. It's if you're in a long-term relationship or you've been married even for a short time, you do lose all that self-confidence, especially if you've had a bad experience with a woman who's sort of been browbeating you, um, running you into the ground slowly. You know, as they say, baterization by a, a thousand cuts or some other YouTubers say. Um, and then you get out there and you start dating again, all right? And you just don't know where to start. And you've got to start training and getting back into it again because you've lost all your game, you've lost all your mojo um, because you're not used to those interactions anymore. So I, I can definitely understand how that can be off-putting, especially when you go from being uh, married or, or whatever, you get separated, you jump, oh, I'm going to jump on a dating app, right? You go on there and you just have a really bad time because you don't know what you're doing. You don't know how to approach the situation and you then you lose confidence in yourself and you're getting rejected over and over again on dating apps, women um, unmatching you, blocking you, not responding to you, flaking, all that sort of stuff. So you can understand, once again, why guys at any age who, who are coming out of long-term relationships or who also might not be um, confident you might not have even been in a relationship, but you're just not confident and those things happen. Um, why you just go, nah, it's just too much of a blow to the ego. That's the reality of it, right? No one likes being rejected. No one likes feeling like they're having to go at something and not getting what they want. And you just give up on that. Anyway, guys, about halfway through. So if you're enjoying the content, please subscribe to the channel. I'm aiming for 7,000 subscribers. So it'd be great if you could help out with that. Um, and the best way you can help me, guys, is watch the videos through uh, to the end because that's what YouTube values is the watch time and that'll get me out to more viewers. And if you do want to additionally support the channel, uh, check out my Patreon, which is the link in the description um, or the pinned comment. Let's finish it off. They start talking about their truck or hunting or you know, a job that they used to have 20 years ago and they, they just bore the hell out of her. And so they lose her that way too. Um, and so a lot of these guys are just, you know, they're just plain rusty when it comes to social interaction. And that can be fixed too. You can always, you know, get back on the horse and start talking to people. And eventually, um, 
you know, you'll get used to interacting with women and, and things will get better. Um, but, you know, social anxiety is a big part of it, you know, that when they just lose their confidence, and it's not just with women, it's with men too, they just aren't comfortable talking to strangers anymore. They kind of keep within themselves, withdraw into themselves. They have no confidence in who they are, especially if they're not working anymore and their whole identity was their job and they don't have a job anymore. They don't have a career. They may not have money, but they just don't have any identity. And I think that's a really good point he touches on. So it's like the isolation, right? So especially if you've been in long-term relationships um, or your friends or your mates that you grew up with, they're all now married. They've got uh, families. They've got commitments. They haven't been through the divorce grinder yet, right? Slowly, slowly people drop off, right? And so you end up just, your only social interaction is either with your wife or your girlfriend at the time or, and or your kids or parents of the kids, all right? That's it. Right, and so you become isolated, and you lose your social skills, and so you just end up becoming a hermit. Now, this hasn't happened to me, but I've seen it happen to a lot of other guys. There's another guy I talked about. Uh, you know, I called him Bretty, good old Bretty, right? And he's a really good mate of mine. He was a very quiet kind of guy, and he went through a really bad divorce. Um, but he sort of dropped off when he got married. He worshipped the woman that he was married to. It didn't work out. Um, and, and now guys, um, he hasn't been able to, um, recover and become social again. Um, he actually now is, you know, really become a recluse. Um, he goes to work and he just stays home and then he just drinks more or less, um, because yeah, he went through a bad time and he hasn't recovered from it and he hasn't reached out and, and tried to build his social networks, which are very important for them. Like time with the boys, laughing with the boys. That's very important. And guys, that's another reason why I made this channel. There are a lot of guys out there who need um, interaction with other men. So guys, interact in the comments, share your experiences. I think that really helps a lot of guys out who are going through a hard time. Because of that, they just don't know how to interact with other people. And so some of these guys, they do end up coming here for, those guys come for financial reasons. That's kind of like why I came here, financial reasons. I never thought I'd ever date again. It wasn't even on my mind. Was, you know, I was here to survive. And I meet guys all the time that came over here, same as me, and they're doing it for financial reasons. They can have a ni little bit nicer house here, a nicer apartment, and they can afford a little better lifestyle in the Philippines. And plus, they're bored back home anyway, so they come over here, and it all works out for them. And, uh, you know, they start settling in, and they, they make a few friends. And then they realize that all these other guys that are the same age as them, and some of them, you know, are not as attractive as they are, and not as in good a shape as they are, and don't have um, the financial means that even they have, and, but they've got these, you know, lovely wives and girlfriends. <laughs> and so um, they start thinking, well, you know, gee, if, if John over there can have that nice girlfriend and he's happy and everything, maybe I could do that too. And I think, look, and I, I've been pretty critical of this, uh, um, you know, guys going overseas and that. Like, sure, there are lovely people wherever you go. You just need to vet people out. But you need to also be very careful because a lot of guys who are lonely, um, and they go overseas, they end up getting um, with the local women thinking that because they're getting such good treatment um, that they, they found a unicorn and then they get a, they have a bad experience as well because women are the same everywhere, guys. Just got to watch out for it. You know, they, they think they're going to go to the Philippines and they're going to get a perfect little princess. You got to really question if you're 60 years old or maybe 70 years old like this gentleman, why truly is that woman with you? It's probably for security uh, and financial reasons. That's just the reality of it. If you're fully aware of that and you're happy with that, hey, go for it. But don't go thinking that they truly love you or something. Like if you were over there in the Philippines um, and you had the financial means of a local, right? Because these guys go over there and their money is just compounded, right? Because of the exchange rates and um, the, the cost of living is probably far lower. Well, not probably, it is far lower. And so they're seen as a wealthy person, right? They're going to elevate a local um, to a higher status. So a lot of these guys go over, they're not thinking about that, thinking it's a magical fairyland. Um, fairy tales come true, you know, and they're going to meet the love of their life over there. But I know of a gentleman around this age um, within my own network, right? And he went over there and did that. He got absolutely cleaned out, right? And he made a big mistake. He brought her back uh, to Australia, which they say not to do. But he did that. Um, she ended up uh, using him up for him to look after her uh, and her family. He bought him cars. He put him in a house. He did all this stuff. And then they just used him up and threw him on the curve. All right. And, and 
that'll be it for him. I don't think he'll be back out doing that again. So that's just something I like to say to guys is be careful, do what you want. Like this Passport Bros thing, the, while I can't get behind it because I'm very cynical of it um, because I've seen things that happen um, and I've heard a lot of stories and other YouTube channels that talk about a lot of this stuff, all right? Just be careful, all right? Be careful, all right? There's a reason why these women are going out with you. It isn't because they look at you and go, you're just an awesome guy and I don't care if you don't have $2 to rub together. It's just the reality of it, guys. And uh, they start changing their their mindset. They start thinking, well, maybe it is a possibility. That's kind of what happened to me. I just, you know, I'd given up on it totally. I was just trying to survive. And then once I was able to survive here and I was making enough money to, you know, pay my rent, pay my bills and have a little bit left over to actually go out with a couple of friends and, you know, have a couple drinks and go to a party every once in a while, meet some new people. And then slowly I decided to, to go on a couple of dates and, uh, you know, one thing led to another. Now I'm happily married with a baby. Um, the farthest thing from my mind. Is wow. Okay. So this guy is a look, not being rude, senior citizen, right? And he's got a baby and he just got married and he's happy about it. And good. I hope it goes well for him. But just think about the risks involved in that. And also you've got a young child and you're like 60 plus. It's like, I don't know, guys. I don't know. I never, ever thought that would happen, but I was the same way with, you know, as a lot of these guys, I felt the same way. I just, it wasn't I had anything against women. I didn't. I just said, you know, I'd been there, done that, had lots of girlfriends, been single, been married, and uh, was just fine surviving. I had my little apartment over here, and I liked my little apartment, and, you know, I could kind of do what I wanted, and I was, had my Camby where I was teaching English online, and then I started my YouTube channel, and, uh, Everything was fine. I just didn't, I didn't have a void. I didn't feel like I had this void in my life that I needed a relationship. And um, once I started dating, you know, it, it was just, you know, a few different women and most of them didn't work out for various reasons. Nothing really wrong with them, just not the right person. And I was about- I'm just gonna stop it there. And this is the last time I'm gonna stop it. I know I can't help myself guys, but think about it. And a little, uh, even my, my friend Larry, he does the same thing. He gets lonely. Right, he gets lonely. So Larry's not, he's not at this age, he's um approaching sort of mid 40s. Um, but he's the kind of guy he, he needs to sort of have company, companionship. Um, and he makes really bad decisions and, uh, about the women he lets in his life because he takes on sort of any woman who will have him, any sort of drifter or paper bag that fly, flows by, he latches onto it and it always ends badly. So if you're if you're trying to meet women out of a place of being really lonely and taking who you can, who's there, you know. The reality is, it's probably not going to end that well. Um, so I'm not trying to be negative about it. I'm just telling you what happens, guys, because um, I've seen a lot of stuff, and especially through my friends and networks as well. I'm ready to give up on the whole thing all over again, you know, and just say, you know, let's just go back to being single. It's fine, and I don't want to waste the money anyway. And then I met Jen, and the rest is history. But... So it's just, you know, kind of a video for you guys out there that are saying that, um, telling me that, you know, I don't want to date anymore. I don't want a relationship. I don't need a relationship. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but you might want to think, like, what's your life going to be like? Say you make it to 85 or 90 years old. Whether you stay in America, Australia, England, wherever you're from, where you come here, it doesn't matter. And you're totally alone. I mean, totally alone. And, you know, you may need somebody to help you, you know, take your medication, do your shopping, take care of your house, or you just may start, you know, you, if you don't have the mobility where you can't go driving anymore, and so you're kind of stuck at home, um, it's nice to have somebody there to, to share your life with, you know, to, to watch TV with, to play cards with, to talk to, you know, whatever. And, you know, that's what a lot of guys find here. They have someone that's, you know, a bit younger than them, and uh, it kind of fills, you know, a void that they didn't even know they had. So that's basically, you know, the story about that and you know my thoughts on it um let me know what you guys think in the comments below all right so that's the video guys he just sort of goes on for a little bit longer but so he just said something there and a lot of guys say this to me too um being a guy who doesn't have children who's not married and guys say to me what are you going to do when you're older you're going to be alone you're going to be sitting in a house you know you're going to be 75 years old it's going to be christmas day you're going to be sitting there lonely don't you want someone there to be with you but as you all know guys a lot of the time um, these women, especially when you get older and what you see with other people, like I saw this with my own grandfather, he actually had a Filipino wife 
She didn't look after him. She didn't give a shit. They extract money out of him. Um, and he went and he died in an um, elderly home and she left him, right? So these guys thinking that they're going to have a, a carer or a nurse um, who's going to be 100% with them and want to wipe their ass and all this sort of stuff. I think it's a bit of a fairy tale. But what, what do you do when you get to 85 and 90 years old? You just die. I mean, that's just the reality of it. You, people say, are oh, you going to die alone? We all die alone, guys. And I know there are instances where you hear of someone dying with all their loved ones sitting around them in a room, but I think that's very, very rare. And most of the time, people are dying in a, a aged care home or they're dying in their own house with a, with a family who never visits them when they're lying there needing help. So, and at the end of the day, what happens? Everyone just swoops in like vultures and takes all your assets anyway when you die. And, and so while it's a very cynical thing, it's a very real thing that happens. All right, guys, that's it for today. Um, look, thanks for watching. Put your comments and thoughts. And if you agree with me, disagree with me, I'd like to hear it. Cheers, guys. I'll see you in the next one.